Here we go, people. Yeah. We're back. And Deji is going to kick things off. Big up, people. Big up, Spurs fans. Big up, Villa fans. You're with your boy, Dej. From the stands, Josh in the building. Now, tonight is all about Spurs Villa. We're going to unpick the weekend's results. And we're going to be looking and moving forward. But Villa fans, don't start shaking your bum. There's a couple of things that I just need to just keep real. First and foremost, I said it last week and I say it again. Well, bloody done. Well done. I said, if you beat Arsenal, if you do the unthinkable, you deserve to finish fourth. That doesn't mean you're going to get fourth, but you deserve it. Deserving and getting is two different things. But big up to Aston Villa fans. Arsenal fans that are in the chat right now, all you cronies, guess what? You get a night off. You get a night off from Easter. Because Easter started last week with your dusty performance, and we will see what you're going to do on Wednesday. So we're not even going to talk about you. Well, we might. We're going to get into the game, and we're going to talk this and that. We're really going to be unpicking the weekend results in games. Josh here. He's been shaking his bum violently all day. And I can see all the Villa fans in the chat shaking their bum. So it should be an epic show. But Josh, how are you, mate? I'm good, mate. I'm, I'm good. Uh, well, I should be feeling even better than you. I'm surprised you're still feeling positive because um, uh, we've got to address some situations. I've, I might be calling you deflective Deji today because I feel like the last 48 hours... It's not delusion, it's deflection. I think you're the master of deflection, and deflection is away from your own team, but we'll come on to that. But there's the big elephant in the room, Dej, that you haven't addressed, and a couple yes. of people already put it in the comments. And here is one of them, Rhinoskin, the man you found there to do the shout-outs, and someone else put it as well. Um, which we, We've got to address this elephant. Uh, Brummy guy, where is the man you guy? Is he doing the training on the admin? Dej, I think you need to address this yeah. elephant in the room. Of what is oh, to us today. We have to address the elephant. Uh, Cass is not in the building. Uh, you are right. Cass is doing the admin behind the scenes. I've sent him off to do some printing because I needed some printing done. So he's gone to the local internet cafe to get some of the printing done. I think Josh has ordered some stuff from Uber Eats and Cass will have to pick it up. There is no point having Dusty Man U in the building when these clowns could only get a draw against Bournemouth. I mean, this team is the reason why we coined Dustier than Tutankhamun. West Ham, Manchester United and Chelsea. I know Chelsea are winning tonight, but these are the three dustiest teams I've ever seen. Dusty, Dusty, Dusty. So Cass is not with us. We did not invite Cass. I say it publicly, although it's all love, but never a foul. We'll be doing a show later on tonight. So please go over there, like and subscribe. There are people, we love them. And you will be seeing me and Josh on Never a Foul later in the week on Wednesday. But as for tonight's show, tonight's show is about the big players, the big dongs, the, the team who is going for top four. And I might say, Josh, I think the top four is almost as interesting as who's going to win the league after what we saw over the weekend. I don't know which one's more excited, winning the league or getting top four. All I know is it's entertainment and I'm enjoying every bloody minute of it. But let's get into it. I think it's only right if we start with the Villa game. Let's start with the Villa game because that was the one freshest in our mind. Talk us through it. Um, I'm going to give you my two sets about Arsenal. And then we'll, we'll, we'll look at Tottenham uh, and why I'm optimistic as to what's going to be happening moving forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to, first of all, shout out the chat. So everyone who's in both streams today, make sure you are dropping a like. Uh, as I said in my poll, you can either drop a like if you want a view from the stands for either the Aston Villa win or for the humble pie that we're about to serve Deji later, um, which which is key. And if you're, of course, on Deji's stream, then just smash a like for supporting, you know, the fact that Arsenal still have made your weekend somehow, but just ignore your result because that, that doesn't matter. Let's, let's deflect if you can. But yeah, no, we're going to get into it. And uh, this is this is what it's all about. I do want to quickly shout out 
Ken M is starting the hype already, saying big up to Ken M for the super chat. So this is interesting. This this will be interesting tonight. As I said, we've already got someone on the admin duty. It's time to talk for the big boys. And um, look, I I I I I've got to appreciate everyone being in here. There's lots of you who are coming in, in the comments, and we do see them coming in, and we do have a good giggle when we see them. But look, let's just let's just put this straight. And I've I've been tweeted this. I've been shouting it. Unai Emre owns London. It's a fact. Unai Emre in an Aston Villa tracksuit in his smart managerial clothing with his slip back hair, his claret and blue tie, his dapped up suit. He owns London. London is our playground. London is our playground. And the reason why, Dej, is Unai Emre hasn't lost in London. He has not lost in London since he's been Villa manager unbeaten and we've gone to the emirates a team who as we would say have been shaking their bum violently about the fact that they've only conceded four goals since january uh we've scored the most goals from set pieces i had arsenal fans telling me villa one of the worst teams for conceding set pieces they thought they were going to steamroll us but what they are forgetting is we have one of the best managers one of the best tactical managers in the league Dej in Unai Emre. We went there, we learned from Manchester City away at the Etihad, and we executed a game plan that was absolutely prolific. Now, I've got some Arsenal fans, Des, trying to tell me that in the first half, and Mikel Arteta's coming out, uh, saying, do you know what? Arsenal should have had three or four goals. I, I don't know what Mikel Arteta's smoking. I don't know what he's seeing. Yes, Emi Martinez has pulled off a world-class save for the Trossard one. But apart from that, the, the odd the odd chance, which I'd expect my goalkeeper, the world's number one to do, I'd expect him to make those I'm saves. I'm not sure about world's number one, but he's pretty good. But yeah, go on, sorry. Pretty good. Pretty good. He is top <laughs> class, Deji. And if you think your goalkeeper for one minute is better than Emmy Martinez, <laughs> then I'm going to have to slap you out here because this is, this is crazy chat coming from you about this is the case. But... In in, in 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 retrospect, what I think Mikel Arteta is forgetting is the fact that we've hit the post with Volley Watkins the other end to go one 0 up. The fact that actually we had Arsenal with all their possession, with all Saka's little dribbles and Trossard's dribbles and Odegaard, you know, approaching our final third. Did they really create much in that first half? I wasn't scared. I wasn't scared. But what I do know is in the second half, it was absolute dominance. And the biggest reality for me was that that Emirates crowd folded. That Emirates crowd folded. They realised and sat there and gone, this team ain't as good as we think it is. This team isn't title worthy. This team is still a few pieces missing. And that Emirates crowd played into the Villa's hands because we went on the front foot. We controlled them. We started penetrating the midfield. And then all of a sudden, the Baileys, the Zaniolos, the Watkins, the Rogers had the legs, the gas, and the tenacity to get them behind. And do you know what, Dej? It's just, it's it, the reason why this Arsenal defeat, and I'm big up to everyone in the chat as well, but this one, why it meant so much is, and you've heard it as well on some of these other channels. How many people keep telling me Unai Emre can't manage the League and Cup? How many yeah. people kept telling me, watch Unai Emre fold? He can't do it. Yeah. And that's why that win meant a lot. And do you know what, Dej? I'm sure you'll agree from what I've said, but that, that was total dominance from Villa in the second it, half and a professional performance indeed. It it was. And for me, you know, I called I called something similar. I said last week that I called a draw. The reason why I called a draw was because I knew that you and I, Emery, from last season when they, they got when you guys got a draw at the Emirates, it felt like you he had a point to prove. And that was one of the things that I was warning Arsenal fans. Believe it, Arsenal fans were shaking their bum about Tottenham's result on the weekend. And I was like, look, before you shake your bum, <laughs> wait until you've played Villa. But Arsenal fans were so arrogant that to their mind, it was already in the can. And that is the biggest thing you can do, is when you think you've done it, that's when you're at your weakest. And we saw that with Arsenal. Apart from the Trussard chance, you, you're right, you had the Ollie Watkins there. I think there was a header that just went wide. But what I found that was so impressive was that you could see towards the end of the first half that Aston Villa were getting in the game from Watkins' mm -hmm. charge. You're thinking, bloody hell, we can get at them. This second, okay, the, the shot that went wide, apart from that, 
he was doing absolutely nothing. You've got Kai Havertz on the pitch doing absolutely nothing. Jesus, what is he doing? And then you're thinking, Villa could do something. And then at 60 minutes, 70 minutes is in the game. I'm thinking, you know what? Arsenal don't even look threatening. I don't see... I actually had it down at nil-nil. I said, you know what? I think Villa are going to do it, you know? Villa are going to scumbag a nil-nil draw. But actually, as the, it was getting on, Zaniolo was getting in the game. And you know who, who stood out for me? Bloody yeah. Tillemans, where has he been? I've not <laughs> seen this brother since he was at Leicester. This <laughs> brother just come out of nowhere and was having a blunder. Like he was causing Arsenal all sorts of problems. And then you got Paul Torres there doing his thing. Konza was just an ever-present defensive wall. And I'm like, nah. And then, when you went 1-0 up, I said, you're lying. No way. No way you just scored. And literally, as I'm jumping up and down and I hit my hit my knee against the bloody door, it's bloody 2-0. And now I'm laughing. Now it's madness. So for me, I think what yesterday's game was a vindication. It was a vindication that Unai Emery is a master tactician. And to be honest, we, the kind of fans who are not Villa fans, we're the neutrals, if you want to call it that, we underestimated Unai. We were too focused on his on what he does in Europe that we gave him mm-hmm. not a chance in the league. And what he showed was he made one tweak, one tweak, and you started to open up Arsenal like the Red Sea. And the best thing, the best thing from that game for people like Artillero and his fellow cronies bashing away at the keyboard in their underwear at home right now is that Arsenal had no clue. They didn't know where to go. They didn't know where to look. The other thing that I noticed, and I have to say, big up Villa fans. How many Villa fans turned up to the Emirates? Bloody hell. You guys oh, wow. literally sold out the away stand. Big up to you yeah. for making the journey this, from Birmingham, making the journey from Birmingham all the way down to London on a Sunday afternoon. What a crowd. And you know what? I think the crowd, the away fans played a part because when you looked into that corner, Ollie Watkins and Cole's thinking, bloody hell, we got support here today. We've got bloody support. So with that, big up to Villa. And you know what? Let me take it back. I'm going to take it back. I'm not. I, look, sometimes we get carried away on these streams. We get emotional. Ollie Watkins, I will have Ollie Watkins at Spurs. I will wow. have him at Spurs. What a player. What a player. That goal, the, the poise, because you know he could have rushed that. One nil is not secure. He could have rushed that shot, but he had the he had the poise to look up and chip it over rare like. He was a mug. It was absolutely joyful to watch. It was scenes. And it confirmed what I always thought, which is that Arsenal, when it comes to April, there is a negative correlation between Arsenal and April. Not taking anything from your performance, but don't be surprised. When I was telling Arsenal fans who were shaking their bum, those who were naked at home, Those who are naked right now watching this on their phone or on their laptop. When I was telling you, I can see Arsenal losing three games. You looked at it and you were like, nah. Now you've lost to Villa. You'll probably lose to Spurs on the weekend. And then you're going to get slapped up by Wolves. That's what's going to happen. And when that happens, I'll be here waiting for you all. Villa fans. Big up to you. Thank you very much. Thank you for making my weekend. The thing is, though, Josh, as you know, you you deserve, if you beat Arsenal, you deserve four. That is my statement. The only right. question I will ask is, do you have the minerals? Do you have the bottle to take four from Spurs? Because if Spurs win their game in hand by four goals, we're back four. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't, don't, hold, pause, stop a second. I'm just saying. The way you just casually dropped in, 
You've obviously been watching too much Chelsea or something, like a club that, you know, you thought, yeah, a dusty club. We, we, you just dropped in that scoring four goals is going to be easy for a club like you boys, right? You thought that, right? Let's, let's just pause for a second on that. I appreciate that you have now accepted that Ollie Watkins is a top, top player. I appreciate the fact that you've absolutely put the Villa fans on a pedestal because as uh, a few people said, they sell out. Uh, as Super Matty was at the game yesterday, he said the Arsenal fan base were embarrassing. It was like there was a fire drill, which is absolutely true. Um, and, and I absolutely, you know, respect that. We've got someone in the comments, I think it's uh, Arta, uh, Artelero, who he's, he's having a bit of uh, concussion because, um, <laughs> look, you beat us at Villa Park. This Unai Emery stat isn't, False. He hasn't lost in London since being a, an Aston Villa manager. Uh, and if you're trying to find it, it would have been someone like Gerard in charge or something like that. Unai Emery owns London. You just need to remember that. It's your fault you got rid of him. It's also your fault, Arsenal, that you got rid of Emmy Martinez. And and you, you just yeah, need to start stupid. learning. Because you, you, Ray you, Ray, you, sorry. Yeah, you've got you've got two bang average goalkeepers in Ramsdown Raya and you and you've got yourself in a little bit of a, a, a hole here. Um and, and, and that's the thing with that. But no, the fact that actually, you know, Spurs and Villa fans sort of uniting in this whole um, Arsenal uh, demise is 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 quite poetic. Um, but as I said, it's 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 very good banter aside and all that. But Dej, have we got the minerals? Have we got the minerals to go on and get forth? Well, yeah. all I can say is this. I'm starting to look at my team yesterday who went to the Emirates, uh, and I've got to keep stressing this, a team that has went to the Emirates not playing particularly well. And when I say not playing particularly well, not playing at our top performance that I've seen with United Emirates. The last time I saw Villa play like that, believe it or not, was just before Christmas when we beat Man City and Arsenal in the same week. Villa fans have been chomping for a performance like that again. We've been begging, waiting for it, but we've still been getting over the line. I know that yesterday is going to be the catalyst to finish strong. You, man, Spurs, are either going to fall off the wagon or you're going to finish strong. I'm telling you, we're not falling off the wagon. We will end strong. And the only thing that we've got to combat... and the only What makes thing that we've you think that, though? What makes you think that? Because, because I'm not, I, not being funny, it's a good result. You've done that this season. In fact, you did it last season. But what makes you think you're going to finish strong? Because... You could have just been riding off the kind of adrenaline rush for yesterday's game and the fact that a lot of Arsenal fans thought it was going to be a walk in the park. You know, you still got Europe this week. I, 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 I'll, give you, I'll give you the reason why. My reason why is, number one, we are starting to develop what I would call a great core of leaders in this team. I'm talking about Emmy Martinez, World Cup winner. I'm talking about Paul Torres, who's won European trophies at the best level under Unai Amre and understands what it takes to win. Okay. I'm talking about John McGinn, who's developed in that role as a captain. And, a, and yes, they showed a true captain's performance. Yuri Tillemans has won silverware. Okay. We're talking about players like that. I look at your Spurs side and think, where's your leaders? The fact that Hume Ming Son is your captain, I still think it's a very bizarre captain choice. I've, I look across you your team and go, the where? Service that he's given to Spurs. And all the but, goals yeah. that he's scored. How's that bizarre? Uh, listen, where's your where's your where's your leaders? Where are your leaders to know what it takes to get over the line? Where are your leaders to know what it means to win silverware? And that is why I know we're not competing for trophies. Well, we are. You're not. Yeah, but, but, you, but, but, but okay, go on. I think we are. But at the end of the day, for me, Dad. I think what trophy are you I competing think... for, though? What trophy are you competing for? Because we're, we're competing for that we're, doesn't we're, count. That's just compi- <laughs> that is competing. That's a dusty competition. If you're going to start shaking your bum for the Europa Conference League, mate, you're you, you stoop lower than West Ham, just so you know. It's the likes of West Ham shaking their bum for that competition. Don't you dare say you're competing. That it's not a competition. That's a bloody joke. That's what that is. But go on. 
chat. This is what I mean about this man, right? This is why I love Deji. Because he comes on at a chest and has the highest standards of trophies. He doesn't want anything but Premier League or Champions League. But we're talking about Spurs, the team whose cabinet is as dusty as Chelsea and Manchester United combined. That's how dusty Spurs' trophy cabinet is. And so he does not want any apparently mediocre trophies, but I love it. But I am sh- I am looking at this season and I'm going, how many teams can go to big clubs away from home and put on a performance like that. You had your chance to go to Newcastle and put on a big statement performance. You didn't. So I'm looking at the mentality of the players here. Our biggest thing is, you know, can we go from the highs of beating Arsenal, go to France and Lille and win, and then re and then refocus at home against Bournemouth in the Premier League, and um, that that's a big thing. And Dej, I've just seen this comment. I think this is a brilliant one, actually. Yes, Villa have, have two games. I want to pick up on as well from Max yeah. Powers. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and Matt, I've got that one start as well. Villa have two games before Spurs even play again. Okay, now you don't. That's massive on the table because all of a sudden, the little pressure, the little bottle that we are shaking away. You know, you're our Prosecco bottle. We're giving you a little bit of a shake, right? You're either going to implode or you're going to be able to wear it. And I'm just interested to see, uh, you know, how that goes for you. But Can I just answer that? And then I want to answer Max Power's point. So the truth of the matter is there's more pressure on Villa to finish fourth than Spurs. Yes, I know Spurs is is part of the big six. But put the big six aside, okay? Villa... Under Unite Emery, you were able to get... Where did you finish? What, seventh last season? You finished above Spurs, basically. So, and my logic is, even if you have a new manager come in, we expect progression. Not regression. Not like Manchester United. Pochettino, you can argue it's his first season. But you can't be going backwards. So, Unite is doing his job. He's had a whole season ahead, or or a season and a half, ahead of Apostle Coglu. So you should be doing well. He's had more time with your players, more time to test and learn, more time to work out the formations and to form the, the McGinn's and the Ollie Watkins of this world. My manager's only been in charge five minutes. So the fact that you, Villa fan, can already see that we're on, we, we're on your level, if not higher than you already, and he's just bloody got here, is a testament to how good a job Poster Cogley done. Now, let me take Max Power's point. Outside opinion. Max Power, two seasons ago, on stream, when I was a little puppy, I said I thought Villa and Newcastle would finish above Arsenal. I was wrong. Villa and Aston Villa didn't finish above Arsenal. They bloody well finished above Spurs, because it was last season. Sorry, it was about a season ago. I, I was calling it. The reason why I was calling it is because I could see the progress. I could see that Villa and Newcastle were both teams that the big six needed to fear. Teams that could turn on and upset the apple cart. And to be fair, Newcastle got bloody Champions League football last season. And this year, it's Aston Villa that are doing their bit to turn it in. So I saw it. But I do think the media have slept on Villa. They've, They've slept on you because... You're not sexy enough. They've slept on you because your shirt is claret and blue. And let's not, let's be real, claret and blue is just not really sexy on the eye. That's really what's going on. But really and truly, you deserve the same. As people shake their bum for Newcastle, they should be shaking their bum for Villa. Because I've been calling it from the beginning of last season where I got it wrong when they I said Arsenal, and in fact, they finished above. Spurs, so they should be putting more respect. Even me, I've had to U-turn on Ollie Watkins. Just said it last week. I wasn't sure. That performance on the weekend said, you know what? I have to admit, Ollie Watkins is better than Richarlison. He is, because I don't think Richarlison scores that goal on the weekend. I don't think he even controls the ball like that on the weekend. And that's why I'm going to give... Look, I'm, I can be shameless, but some, but I also know where and when to give props. And I have to do give props to your team. And the media have been an absolute disgrace. But get top four. And rest assured, this media, Gary Neville and co, will be shaking their bums violently for your club. So don't you worry. Harrigan's finally done a bit of analysis. But just uh, while we interrupt, 
I don't know if anyone's seen it. Chelsea players fighting over a penalty. Chelsea got awarded a penalty. We all know that Cole Palmer takes the penalties. Nicholas Jackson and Madaweke literally having to be wrestled away from Conor Gallagher and Thiago Silva. I mean, they're falling up and players are in-house fighting about who takes the penalty. And Jackson can't even celebrate it. It's all going off, um, which is quite interesting. But that shows a dusty club in itself, doesn't it, uh, Deji? That, you know, you've got teammates fighting over a penalty um, yeah. like that. But to it, I, mean, I just want to reintroduce people to Deji on A View From The Stands because there's some people who can't hear Deji has very, very high expectations. I want him, he will rank in a second, Dej. I want you to rank the tier levels of trophies, just just for us, because Deji's been trying to encourage me to be a bit more aspirational. Deji's trying to tell me to raise my standards as a Villa fan and not sink these levels. But I want you to hear from the man right now of the ranking of trophies. So just just sit back and enjoy this. Deji, go through the tier ranking of trophies, yeah. please. So Villa fans, look, I'm not going to lie. I think every football fan deserves to see their team play at the highest level and playing at the highest level and going for the big trophies. I want to see, first and foremost, the likes of Real Madrid, the likes of Barcelona, the likes of Inter Milan at Villa Park. I would like to see those players go for a walk in the bloody ball ring. Do you know what I mean? I would like to see Diego Simeone, you know, getting a Starbucks just in the boring or at Birmingham train station. That's what it takes. And for you to do that, you need to be playing Champions League football. So let me quickly rank it. And I no doubt, Villa fans, you will agree. At the moment, Josh, and I want to hear your view as well, because you've actually, you've been sitting on the fence. You've been doing a little Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall and stayed on the wall. So I'd be good to get your opinion today on the trophies. For me, I can't separate the, the Premier League or the Champions League. I think they are the highest achievement any player can get. And I talk like a player because I play, not professionally, but, you know, I, I, I don't know, I kick, the, I kick the ball about and I can do a better job than bloody Kai, Kai Havertz, do you know what I'm saying? So, uh, So for me, top of the tree, Champions League or Prem, either or. Whichever you win is respectable. Second is the Europa League. That's decent because if you win the Europa League, it's a trophy, but also it gets you Champions League football. Back in the day, it didn't do that, but now it does. And I used to say the Europa League, what is the point of the Europa League about five, six seasons ago when you could win it and it didn't mean nothing? You couldn't even get Champions League football. So big up to UEFA for, for making that change. After that, after the Europa League is when it gets truly dusty. The FA Cup, the Europa Conference League, and then the Carabao Cup. Yeah. Now, for me, those three <laughs> trophies are akin to someone running the uh, London Marathon and being offered a bottle of water on the way. You can pick it up if you like and have a swig, or you can just carry on running. As for me, personally... I would keep running. But if you're dehydrating and you need a little bit of water, by all means, grab one or grab the little wet sponge and wet yourself with it. But there are no trophies to shake your bum about. Under no circumstances should any half-decent fan, any club with ambition, Villa, Newcastles of this world, I understand if Bournemouth shake their bum. I understand if Wrexham shake their bum. I bloody understand if Stockport shake their bum. But Villa can't be shaking their bum for Europa Conference League or Carabao. It is a disgrace. And you know it deep down. Don't lie to yourselves. Don't lie to yourselves. You all know it. I'm just telling you what you were already thinking. Ledge, man. How can you say that about the FA Cup? How can you put the FA Cup in such lower echelons of your rankings? Because you gotta, you gotta. Because you gotta top four, that. because top four is a thing. If we had what just mean? kept Champions League to champions, then the FA Cup would mean something. But in this day and age, bloody fifth can get you Champions League football. I would rather finish fifth than win the FA Cup, and I think most fans would rather finish fifth they win an FA Cup because most fans want to see their team play against the best teams in the world. Who would you rather 
go and see would you like to see at Villa Park? Are you going to pay money to watch Villa against Coventry? Or do you want to, or are you going to pay the same money to watch Villa against Real Madrid? Come on. I'll answer that. I'll answer that. Okay. You pay your money to watch your team week in, week out. I'll try and win every trophy available. That's where it is. And look, we'll leave it to the chat. Chat, your chance to interact. Is anyone on Deji's bandwagon here? Or are we still looking at it going, Deji's having us all on here. He doesn't, he's having us all on. We're not really subconsciously thinking that. We would take an FA Cup. We would take a Carabao Cup. Um, especially this team's dead. She don't win trophies every season. You know, it's, it's one of them. But so we will move on to. Uh, I am a Spurs fan. I love my he loves this club. We will put some heat on Deji in a minute. We're just going to wrap up on this very thing. So, listen, Deji, it is. It, I, I, I do appreciate that you have given Villa respect where respect is due, and I'm glad you recognise that Unai Emery is there. But go on, then. Let Let me ask you this, right? Do you think that Villa now, you know, with our running, and we're going to have a quick look at this, then with our running, your running, and the fact that we play again before you even play and could put more points on the table, is there not a part of you who's just thinking, you've got such an uphill battle to claw this back? Or do you still see it? Do you still see it as a 50-50? Do you see it as 60-40 in Villa's favour, 70-30? Or are you going the other way? What If you had to put a weight in right now on how you feel about Spurs, Villa, top four, what's your percentage? What's your weight in? And I, and I want to hear it right now. I want to yeah, hear it right now. I'd put it as 75-25% in, in Spurs' favour. And, and I'll explain why. Look, it was a dusty performance on the weekend against Newcastle. But there's one thing that I've been consistent about, Josh, and you know this. And I've been telling people from a long time that I expect Spurs to slap up the Three Musketeers. For those of you who just tuned in for the first time, the Three Musketeers is Liverpool, Arsenal and Man City. Now, look, Josh, when I was calling that we were going to slap up the Three Musketeers, guess what? Nobody could see it, could they? Nobody could see it being a possibility. But it looks like a possibility now, doesn't it? Doesn't it? When we saw Crystal Palace beat Liverpool, nobody saw that coming. Nobody saw Villa beating Arsenal. But I saw a uh, Arsenal dropping points in that performance. I see Tottenham slapping up the three musketeers. And as long as Tottenham slap up the three musketeers, we're going to be fine. Uh, and I think we get it. I think Villa, for me, with the European distraction, I can see you losing points. The good thing is you've got similar games to Spurs. you still got to play... Have you got to play Liverpool still? And Liverpool. Have you played Liverpool twice? And Chelsea. Uh, we've, we've just got Liverpool once at home. Yeah. So I think you've got Liverpool. Have you got, you've got Newcastle still to play? No, we've got... Look, I'll, be, I'll quickly run through the teams. Yeah, we've got Bournemouth, we've got yeah. Bournemouth, Chelsea, Brighton, Liverpool, Palace. Bournemouth, Chelsea, Brighton, Liverpool, Palace. Let's just quickly say your fixtures because I've got them here. You've got Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, Burnley, City, Sheffield United. Okay, so you've got City, Liverpool. You've got your three Musketeers plus a bit of Chelsea plus the two teams fighting for their lives at the bottom. And you want to sit here and look me in the eyes and tell me you are a 75-25 chance of finishing yeah. higher than us in the top four. Because you, Josh, you've just done, you've just made this fatal error that the Arsenal fans made on the weekend. There are no easy teams in the Prem. Don't judge it by paper. Judge it context. Crystal Palace is fighting for their life. They've got points to prove. And in fact, some teams that don't have anything to prove are the worst teams to play. You saw Crystal Palace get a result against Liverpool. What makes you think in your right mind with Eze and Elise that you're going to get a result against Crystal Palace? That is a dodgy, dodgy game. Whereas i rather play the Three Musketeers. Why? Because they are going for the Prem. Why? Because mm -hmm. they are under pressure. Why? Because they can't sit back. They have to go for it. And when they go for it and they can't sit back, 
we see performances like the one we saw from Arsenal against you on the weekend, where really they were caught like rabbits in the headlight. <laughs> and that for me is the G that is the genius. Spurs, Josh, is not under any pressure. Poster Coglu made it quite clear to us. His ambition for the season, when they asked at the beginning, he said, What would success look like? Poster Coglu said, Success would look like are the Spurs happy with the job that I've done? Regardless of where we finish, regardless of whether we win a trophy or not. I can tell you now, Josh, speaking mm-hmm. on behalf of myself and every Spurs fan, because if this if Spurs fans have half a brain, which they all do, no Spurs fan was expecting to win anything this season. We weren't. What we wanted was to get away from the dusty football that we had under Conte and to start playing football the Spurs way, to start attacking teams and having more ball possession. We've achieved that. Anything from that point onwards was a bonus, mate. So is it a disaster if Spurs don't finish in a Champions League spot? Of course not. One thing, though, that's happened and has been clarified, there's six games left and the closest team to us is Newcastle. Ten points behind. So it's we're pretty much guaranteed Europe. We are guaranteed Europa League, if not Champions League football. We've done our job, mate. We have done our job. And you want to you make, let me even make you laugh. If Arsenal do the unthinkable, and it is unthinkable because I don't think they will do it. I've been calling it for months. But let's say Arsenal win the Champions League. Then guess what? Fifth is the Champions League position. So, mate, I win, I win, and we win. That's it. Right. It's a win-win for Spurs. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. First of all, great point here. What pressure, Villander? We've more than overachieved already. You're the one. You're the one who has got the more pressure on you because, quite frankly, I don't care what Big Andrew's saying. I don't care if he's saying it in Australian. I don't care if he's saying it in English. I don't care if he's saying it in Scottish. I don't care if he's saying it in any accent. Whatever Big Andrew's saying, I don't care because you're Spurs. And you had the audacity, you had the audacity to try and think you were big enough to go in the European Super League. You had the audacity to put your chest out there and say, we are a big side, we should be in the Super League. Daniel Levy. So you as a club, as soon as you start thinking you should be in this Super League, you put pressure on yourselves because that means you think you are guaranteed to be playing the best European football each season. So Spurs have created their own label. Big Ange can sit there and try and downplay it. Great. Well done, Big Ange. I see what you're doing, Big Ange. I like that he's also said, put pressure on me next season. And I want to see you then, Dej, come next season with chest when Spurs don't put the pressure on, on Big Ange. I want to see it. Because whatever no, my gap has been Big Ange has already come out to say, Josh, sorry to cut you there. Sorry. To already say that Tottenham will be involved in a tight race. Look, I just want to pick up on two comments. One from Nigel Franklin. He says, Deji prefers to take part than to win. Laugh out loud. That's Spursy. No. I prefer my team to play at the highest level than to play at a dusty level. I would rather see my club play Barcelona than bloody Stockport. Come on, Nigel. Don't lie to yourself. You want to see the best players playing the game. I want to see Tottenham against Bayern Munich. I want to see Look, Eric Dyer, we were laughing. Spurs fans were laughing at Eric Dyer. We were like, oh, he's rubbish. He can't even get in our team. But who's laughing now, though? Whether you like it or not, Eric Dyer's playing Champions League football. He's in the quarterfinals playing against the scum. Mate, I'd rather be where Eric Dyer is. Who's laughing? Spurs or Dyer? That is a very good question. You want to play at the best level. Now, this other geezer, Gary H, says this. Don't you want to win something before you die, Dej? Champions League is not winnable ever. Gary H, if you had said that to me five years ago, I would have said, yeah. I never thought that I would see my club in a Champions League semi-final, let alone the final. But here we were under Pochettino, squaring up against Liverpool. Champions League final that was played in Madrid, in the Atletico Madrid Stadium. I never thought I would see it. 
But when you're ambitious, miracles can happen. And I believe if Tottenham stay hungry and we stay ambitious, ambitious, sorry, you can see Spurs winning a major, major honour in the next three years. And that's what it's about. We are not going to get any plaudits for winning the Carabao Cup. We're not going to get any plaudits for winning the FA Cup. But people will sit <laughs> up and will, respect though. Spurs you if will. we win the Champions League. People will, will sit up and respect Spurs if we win the Prem. People no. will say Europa League is pretty decent competition to win. But look, Reg, you're Reg, laughing at trust. Me. Trust. When you win, if, if you ever win the FA Cup or Carabao Cup, People will actually congratulate you and say, well, done, Spurs, you finally won a trophy. It's been a long time, but have that. Now go on and win more. They won't just laugh at you. They won't like, not show you any respect. They'll actually shake your hand. They'll actually shake your hand. Nobody's but... shaking my hand for Carabao. <laughs> That's Villa. Villa. Villa are biting their hand off for Carabao. Spurs are not, mate. Oh, I love this uh, comment. When are you gonna? Kind of... When are you gonna join the big six? When are you gonna join us? Well, 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 we're hopefully going to be there consistently now for the next three or four seasons, uh, and, and pave a new way. Um, but love this, Deji, your dusty, crusty, poopsy, popsy, random pub players beat the Rolls Royce of North London. I'll super chat you twenty pounds and a can of Mister Sheen to kick your dusty cabinet. <laughs> uh, so he's a he's a he's a man of his word. <laughs> He's a man of his word, old okay. He would super. Hey, curved pound. glass twenty three, <laughs> or one two three. Sorry, you said he was actually uh, sitting naked because I saw that comment. <laughs> mate, bring it on, mate. Bring it on. I expect Spurs to slap Arsenal. Uh, is he an Arsenal fan? He must be. Uh, mate, he's an sure Arsenal you fan. Make have sure you, from the you like and well. subscribe. <laughs> even more than your twenty quid. Make sure you like and subscribe. But <laughs> mate, curved glass. After your dusty performance yesterday. You must be nervous. You must be nervous because your players are showing us what they did last summer. I called it. I called the movie. I know what you did last summer. But all you guys were suffering from something called cognitive dissonance. You know it's going to happen, but you didn't want to believe it. Well, you better believe it, baby. The wobble is star started. Seven games, there's something about seven. And it feels like Arsenal have a thing with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. If you've ever seen that movie, it was a beautiful movie called Seven. Seven games left is when Arsenal go into the thriller. That's when we got to go and find the, the little skeleton bones. That's what we're going to need to go and find where your, your star boy whiz kid is. That is the truth. But for me, I think next season... My manager's already called it. He said, we're going to be in a title race. That's what I want. I'd rather be in a title race than eighth with a Carabao Cup. But, you know, I don't want to keep laboring on the point. You, Josh, I, you've already made it very clear, very perfectly clear. You and the Birmingham Massive will be shaking your bum violently on a day out in London, yeah, for a Carabao. Knock yourself out, mate. Knock yourself out. As for my club, to quote a famous Arsenal um, impressionist, we have bigger fish to fry. Yep, we've got bigger fish to fry, cod and chips. Thank you very much. Well, lovely little speech there, Deji. Uh, I'm going to quickly ask the chat as well to get involved in this one. Big up to all the comments coming in. As I said, Deji and I do read them. I was going there. But I think we're getting the, 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 the substance here. Deji wants his team to play Good football, but not win, uh, as long as it's not dusty. And whatever Ange says, clearly is going to happen. So if Ange is going to tell them they're going to win the league, then of course they're going to win the league next season. But I, I'm going to make a big, bold statement here for you, Dej, right now. Out of your four games, the three Musketeers and Chelsea, 12 points available. You take two points out of 12. You're going to take two points out of 12, okay? You're Impossible. taking two Impossible. points. Impossible. Impossible. Let me I tell want you to know what the chat think. I, on, let me ask the chat first. In the chat as well, how of 12 points when dust when when deflective Deji, I'm gonna call him deflective Deji side go and play uh, City, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea. How many points are they getting? I'm saying two. Deji, tell me why it's impossible. Tell me right now. That what? Tell me why 
two points isn't going to be is impossible. Tell me why you're getting well, more. Let me, let me explain. So first and foremost, already we've played these teams. And out of the four teams you've mentioned, we lost to one of them. And we lost to that one team with nine men. And I remember, Josh, I respect you. You are one of my favourite uh, pundits, streamers, whatever you want to call yourself these days. You were one of the few people that came out and said, blimey, what a game Spurs had against Chelsea. And mm. deep down, every neutral fan knows that Spurs could have got a result with nine men. That was what made it remarkable. We ended up losing 4-1. But if you are really being brutally honest, nine men Spurs could have beaten that dusty Chelsea team. Since then, we've gone on to, we beat Liverpool. We drew away with half our squad depleted with Man City at the Etihad. And we outplayed Arsenal at the Emirates. Outplayed them. We had more ball possession. We had more chances on goal. Why do I think it's going to be any different? What? Because we lost to Fulham. What, because we lost to Newcastle? Mate, first and foremost, we're in a test and learn season. And I already told you this. The one thing I didn't want to say, but I'm going to say it today, and it is shameless, but I will say it. I've come out to publicly declare that I know that Spurs have a problem getting it up against Minos. I know it. I know. We've got problem getting it up. And Newcastle, for me, on the weekend, was... I should say, was a big game. But it wasn't. Because when we looked at their team on paper, my club... You told me not to look on paper. You told me not no, to look, right. on. No, listen, you told me not listen, to look on paper. You told me not to look on paper. explain part of the reason why we lost. <laughs> the Newcastle team that they put out on paper on the weekend was so dusty that my team struggled to get it up again. I'm not making excuses for them. But Spurs need to stop this crap. You need to stop judging the opponent. You need to stop underestimating the, the so-called minnows. Now, Newcastle aren't minnows, but that was their C team. Ox any Newcastle streamer, ask any Newcastle fan, they will tell you that was bottom of the barrel, the team they had to field against Spurs on the weekend. And they beat us. So I'm not happy about that. But I know there's a correlation between being a minnow and Spurs mentality. Now, when it comes to the so-called big guns, remember Villa fans in the chat? You were shaking your bum because Villa Park was a fortress. Well, we came and we slapped you 4 nil. Why? Because we showed you respect. Why? Because you tried to play Tottenham. You tried to play football against Tottenham Hotspur. No team is going to outplay Spurs. Now, I realised something with Newcastle. Part of the reason why that dusty team won is because they adopted what I call smash and grab. And I saw West Ham do it the week before. Knock the ball over the high line, bang it in. It's as simple as that. Now, I'm going to say this to you, Josh. Do you think Arsenal, based on the way they played against you on the weekend, do you think they're going to do a smash and grab? Do you think Newcastle or Liverpool, based on the way they played against Crystal Palace, do you think they're going to lower their, lower their standards to a smash and grab? And finally, Manchester City, that have not scored a single goal, by the way, at the Tottenham Stadium since we moved in, do you think they're going to adopt smash and grab football? I plead to the court and jury that they won't. And if they don't do smash and grab, then it is fair game for Spurs. And I think it actually plays into Spurs fans. Try to play football against Spurs, you get hurt. But actually, you use your brain and do smash and grab, and Spurs lose. That is the weakness to orange ball. Dusty football. Play dusty football against Spurs, and you get the win. Had you been dusty and just knocked it long into Ollie Watkins, knocked it long into Bailey, knocked it long into Zaninolo, you would have slapped us up. But oh no, you thought you could outplay the Pied Piper, and you got bitten in the arse. That's what happened. So. That I just want to clap. Uh, let's have a moment's round of applause for Desi's brilliant Oscar worthy speech. There, he's still not been able to answer my question, uh, which is which is fantastic. Which was the fact of out of these 12 points available, those four teams, Dej, because your predictions, I'm not being reminded of this, your predictions have been a bit off recently, mate. 
you've been telling me the light work of light work of West Ham, light work of Newcastle, light work this, light work that. Your predictions are a bit off, but all right, come on then. Let's let's get a prediction right here. How I many expect, points out of those twelve? I expect Tottenham. I'll give you a two ten, point leeway. Ten points. Ten from twelve. One of these teams. <laughs> Say it a bit louder though, like you believe it. I expect you Spurs like you to get ten points. We will slap up that dusty Chelsea team. Are you mad? They're getting slapped. I can't wait. Arsenal's getting slapped on the twenty eighth. They know it already. Arsenal fans know it. The one dodgy game is away to Liverpool. Is suspectish. Or the Man City game could be a draw. But to be honest, Tottenham at home against City usually results in the win. So we could draw the Liverpool game and I think we slap up everybody else. I'm not scared of the three musketeers. Hell no. No? No? Okay. No. Well, well, let's. I've got that prediction then. Locked in. 10 points. Do you know what? I'll give you nine points at a minimum. All right, I'll let you go. If you don't quite get ten, I'll give you nine. All right. So but... you're 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 even predicting nine for Spurs. No, 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 you're no, a villain, no, man. no, you're no, a no. I'm giving you. No, no. I'm. I. I, I honestly think you're going to get. I think you. I think you're done. I think you're done now. I think you're done. I think Arsenal. I think you'll probably draw with Chelsea, and I think you'll draw with Man City. That's 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 all you're getting from me. That's all okay, you're getting from and me. And for your games, how many points do you think you're getting? All right, and I'll go to my. I'll do because let's go for the big one. So let's go with Arsenal ain't smashing Spurs. Any Arsenal fan losing or not? Chelsea smashing You must be. <laughs> well, well, let's go Chelsea, Brighton, Liverpool for us. Okay, Chelsea, Brighton, Liverpool. Yeah, Chelsea, going... Brighton, Liverpool. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Go, go on. You do your points first for us. Chelsea, Brighton, Liverpool. Chat as well. How many points are we getting? Chelsea, Brighton, Liverpool. By the way, while you're thinking, I've just got to come in. Alan Ford, my lord. Alan Ford. Whoa, lord. Alan Ford. He is the lord of the view from the stands. Thank you for the super chat. It says, "Cheers for tonight." It's been Comedy Central. Listen, if you can't, yeah, if you can't get Comedy Central, uh, Deji will always uh, back you up there. And so, apologies. I've just seen. I don't know how I missed these. Big up to uh, Duper and big up to uh, Vamos VJ for their super chats as well really appreciate big it up, big up, um, up. yeah make sure guys that you check out the pinned comment on a view from the stands it is deji's channel i want to get this guy to 1000 subscribers asap rocky he deserves it um even though he is absolutely crazy with his chat he's a good guy at heart but i i want to know dad no, honestly Josh, do you point... think i'm crazy for real no 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 i i no, like I, I love your passion i love your passion uh and i get i get i just get you but nine points available Brighton, Chelsea, Liverpool. Dej, how many are you giving us? How many are you giving us? So, the, I think Brighton's a dodgy game and I think Liverpool's a dodgy game. I'm giving you three points because Chelsea is fully dusty. I mean, they are, for me, them and Manchester United are the dustiest two teams in the league and closely followed by West Ham after that in terms of the football that they play. I know Chelsea's won tonight, but let's not shake our bum for Chelsea and their emphatic scoreline. They've not turned the corner. It's one good result and they're another result away from going back to Pochettino potentially losing his job. Everton is just fully dusty. They're playing Everton, guys. Let's not shake our bum. But Villa, I, I think you guys have a similar complex to Spurs. You get it up against the big boys and then when you are playing the minnows, you just can't get it up. And so I can't see Villa beating Brighton and I think it all... I think... You're going to give Liverpool a good run for their money, but I, I can just see Liverpool turn it round. And Josh, let's... We do, I, I have seen the comments. We do need to confirm which one of our two teams is finishing fourth. And I guess the questioning is leading towards that fact. But I do think that Villa will, will flop. And But the, the beauty, though, of you only taking three points is that nobody will mind. Nobody will mind because they will turn around and say it's Villa. And actually, you would have had, for me, it signals progress. You should be happy with fifth. Why? Because you were seventh last season. This season, you were playing Europa Conference League. And now you've stepped up. You will be playing Europa League football. So why, why are you running before you walk, Villa fans? Calm yourself down. It's been a minute that you've been at the high table. 
It's been a minute. So chill out, steady steps, and then do your thing. So look, we might both be in Champions League. I don't think fifth should be Champions League. I don't want it. If Tottenham was to get Champions League by finishing fifth, I would I would politely request to be removed. I'd rather play Europa League. No way. Why can you accept fifth and Champions League? That's rubbish. That is crap. So for me, we need to earn it. Finishing fifth and getting Champions League football, that means that hasn't been earned. And any self, any person with self-respect will agree with me. Well, it's a big statement. It's a big statement. Um, and I, I respect that. I think, you know, it's interesting to talk about we should uh, walk before we can run. Well, you also probably need to um, keep that in mind and Big Ange about the fact you're going to be in a title race next season. Come on, let, let's be consistent here. You're telling me that you can go from struggling <laughs> to get top four and, and, and really doing your best to try and bottle it you, to all of a sudden you, being able... Do you think Spurs are struggling? In our in our first season under our Postal Cop... Postal uh, Cop, this is his first how, time in the Premier League. How can you go from there? He was in the Scottish this... League prior to this. <laughs> my point is, my point is this, Dej. How can you go from competing then for fourth, competing... yeah. yeah. To then all of a sudden think in the next season you're going to win a title challenge. Make well, that make me, that make yeah. sense. So first and foremost, Josh, it's called kahunas. Yeah. Unlike maybe you're not used to it, but over here at Tottenham Hotspur, our gaffer's got a kahunas. It's not me coming out with this statement. I was talking about this season. My managers come out and said the next season we are gonna be in a title race, not me. And let me tell you why. With not his squad, the only players he brought in was Vicario. He brought in Van der Ven. Okay, Dragon he brought in in Jan. And he brought in Madders. That squad is inherited from Conte. Because under Conte, we brought in Basuma. We brought in Romero. We brought in Udogi. We brought in Pedro Porro. We brought in Richarlison. Kulazewski. Bloody hell, Benton Court, and the list goes on. So that's not his team. That's not his plan. And then, um, Josh, let me remind you that we lost the best striker in world football in Harry Kane. And yet we find ourselves fifth in the Prem, three points behind Villa. Are you drunk? With a game in hand. So... So now, I'm, I, I know we've got, we took your geezer, by the way. We took lunch from you. Yeah. Remember, we got him. He, under lunch, you got Zani Lolo. You brought in Diaby. In fact, a lot of your ballers came under that guy. And now he's now at the helm at Spurs. If he can bring in good players for you, guess what? He can bring in good players for me. That's right. Hey. Villa fans. We got your guy, Lunch. He's at Spurs. He's at. He's behind the scenes. And listen to this. I believe the reason why he came out with that statement is because Spurs already have verbal agreements with the players that we need. Because if you haven't got verbal agreements with the players that you need, why would you come out with such a with such a statement? I believe Tottenham have already got their replacement striker. I believe we've already got our cover for you, doggy, and. Pedro Porro, and I believe we've got our right hand side because Brennan Johnson and Kulazewski, that Namekit, they are not the ones. And more importantly, I think we've even got cover for Son because Son <laughs> is going to leave us at you, some time. You're all over the place here, covered, right? <laughs> why can't we push? You're all over the place here because, right, you are telling me to calm myself down and go from seventh to fourth is too much of a jump up. That's what you've just told me, right? And the Unai Emery, a manager who has been at the top leagues, managed top, top teams, won major trophies, and you're telling me to calm down. And now I'm hearing from you that the reason why you're allowed to now win the league is because of Johan I'm Lam. not saying we're going to win the league, but we're going to be but, in a title race. Okay, you're going to be in a title race because of Johan Lange. Your are you manager, going to be in a title Are you going to be in a title race? Can you say with chest that you're going no, to be in a title race? No, because I'm going to... 
be like you. I'm going to say we should walk and maybe jog. We'll burst into a jog next season. We, we're, we're walking this season. We're going to jog next season, and then we're going to be sprinting. You've gone from basically coming out of the womb to thinking now that you could go run a marathon. Like this is this is crazy that you think you could even be anywhere near a title challenge next season. When again, the substance of it is you're telling me to calm down, and you think you can jump a couple a couple more places up. We deserve to be competing for fourth. Our trajectory is spot on. Unai Emre has taken us from relegationers, relegationers, three points off the relegation zone. So that's our walking steps, taking us to above Spurs last season. And guess what, Dej? We're going to finish above Spurs again this season. So you don't have the chest or the audacity to sit there and tell me to calm down when we are consistently, probably two seasons in a row, going to finish above you. So I'm going to tell you actually. I don't think Villa finish above. I don't don't think (laughs) Villa finish above Spurs. Not because you can't do Look, you're capable. There's enough in there, and I agree with you, you Unai. But there is something, there is a half-truth in what the fan base have been saying. So I know, Josh, you were pr- pretty upset over the weekend because people have called out you now and said the guy can't multitask. That's what really what you was pissed about. You were pissed because we said you and I can't balance Europa, Europa Conference League and going for fourth at the same time. And I think there's a semi-truth to that. What we know is that you and I has European pedigree. When it comes to winning trophies in Europe, Unai is that guy. I would almost say he's on par with Mourinho. When it's about getting trophies, Unai. In Europe especially, Europa League especially, I see Villa winning the Europa League next season. 100%. I'm going to call it now. We're going to be in the Champions League, bud. You you won't be be in the Champions League. And Unai doesn't win Champions League, by the way. He wins Europa. So I think think Unai actually sabotages you you guys lose some games that you should have, you should be winning because he wants to play in his competition, his competition being Europa League. Now, the other thing is, your squad is not deep enough to mount two challenges. Lille's actually a decent team, mate. They are a decent team. I know. And to play midweek, Thursday, weekend, Thursday, weekend, Thursday, you did it this week, fine. But you um, won't be able to do that three or four on. weeks in a row. We- Oh no, no way. Listen, I love I love that you're trying to give me advice about playing midweek weekend, midweek weekend. I would be able to take that advice of someone who's still in Europe or was in Europe this season. But obviously you and Chelsea are a bit dusty out the loop of that. So you won't know that. But I've got to go to these two super chats quickly. Big up to uh, Super Matty Taylor. He's obviously actually off to Lille in the away end. Uh, he said he's going he? flying up to Big up to so big Matty up to Taylor. Going over to Lille. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, big up to Curve Glass, uh, who says, he's super chatted £10 and said, buy two cans of Mr Sheen for your dusty trophy rooms, one each. So a bit ah. of shade at both of us there. <laughs> but I love that. Um, I love that. I absolutely love that. But um, listen, what he's done well here tonight, guys, and this is why Deji is the master of the arts, right? He's so good at doing this. What he has managed to do is deflect away from that Spurs performance at the weekend. He's done so well to limelight on Arsenal, talk about the Villa, talk about other things. But what we have to address is the fact that Deji, the only thing he's mentioned is, is that Spurs struggled to get it up because they looked at a piece of paper. Well, I... In the same stream today, got told off for looking at on paper about some fixtures. I got told off by the man on the screen saying, Josh, football's not about looking on paper. But I've got to ask this question. Yeah. Deji. Yeah. Deji. <laughs> some of your big game players failed to deliver away yeah. at Newcastle, right? They failed to deliver. And I don't want any of this minnow chat. I don't want any of this we look to their team sheet chat. We struggle to get you it boys, up. That is an issue. You play, no, I can't have... You, you boys, lie. you boys have got to go away to Anfield and away at the bridge. And you've got to not go. And, and I don't want to hear, Dej, in a few weeks' time when you probably drop points against Chelsea. Oh, yeah. there are minnows. They're dusty. We couldn't get it up. We couldn't get it going. Right? No, not for Chelsea. I, I, I won't even use that excuse for Chelsea. That is war. Uh, we hate so, Chelsea, and Chelsea. So hates you're def- exactly that. But why am I not hearing more heat on your team? 
why am I not hearing the fact that actually Ange is again? I want to hear a bit more criticism of your manager, Dan. Yeah, no, dropping. I will give you that. I will give you that now. No, Josh, Let I will me hear give that you. now. The I truth is, it. the truth is, what what Spurs fans are doing and what I've been doing is that we're we're, we're giving him a see. This season's like a season's grace. He has the excuse of it's my first time here. I didn't know it was so cold down south. All of that crap going on. Next season, Postacoglu won't hide the same way. Now, the big issue that Postacoglu, I hope, has realised, and I know Postacoglu watches the show, so I'm going to say this, and he knows this, and he hears this everywhere he goes, but I'm going to say it again. <laughs> Postacoglu is someone that believes that when you play the system, now I'm going to give you two schools of thought here. And I'm going to give you a, a gem tonight. The issue that the naked eye, the issue that most people will see is that they, most people will say that Postacoglu doesn't have a plan B. And yesterday I was thinking the same thing. How can we lose to Dusty Newcastle? All they did was knock the ball over the top of our defence and they scored four goals, easy goals, by just knocking it long. And for me... The easy thing would be, the easy answer would be to say, why didn't we change it up? Why didn't we go deep? Just like when we went down to nine men, why didn't we go deep? Maybe we could have got a draw. The truth is, if you've got nine men, you're probably going to lose anyway. I mean, Liverpool played a low block against Spurs with nine men and we bloody scored uh, in the very, very last minute. Mm. But I'm going to tell you something that it dawned on me today. Postacoglu, for his style of play to work, it relies on repetition. Repetition, repetition, repetition. The reason why he's so stubborn is because once he gets the pattern of play right and the, pl the players know where to be at the right time, Tottenham will be very difficult to stop. But if you keep changing it, flip-flapping, with different opponents, he will never be able to embed Ange Ball. That is the criticism that was given to Aston Villa when we beat you at Villa Park. What did everybody say? Mm. Everybody said, why did he change it? Why did he change it? Why did he adapt the team to try and stop Tottenham? Why didn't he just go with his normal thing? So actually, I think Postacoglu is onto something here. Give him this season to embed his style of play. And if you've seen his performances in the other leagues, the first two years tend to be dusty. But by season three, this brother is picking up trophies. Guaranteed. That's where everywhere he's been. I don't care the level of the competition, but by season three, he's picking it up. So by season oh, three... Of course. I don't care about the level of competition. So you take a Carabao Cup? No. He's oh, won it in the Scottish League. Yeah, look. If we win the Carabao Cup, it's like picking up a bottle of water on the way to the finish line. It's okay, you've got some water. That's about it, mate. But, but, I, believe, but I believe he's he's trying to get this style of play going. And if he gets it going, it's just like Pep, mate. Pep has got a style of play that they're so hard to beat now because it's now ingrained in their bones. That's why people can say with chess, City's going to win the league, City's going to win the league, City's going to win the league. Because it's ingrained. Posto Coglu wants to do that with Spurs. He wants to ingrain his style of play so that we are so effective that even though you know what we're going to do, there is nothing you can do about it. So I understand you, Posto Coglu, because even with City, with Cite, we know exactly what they're going to do. We know exactly how they're going to play. But guess what? We still can't stop them. And that's what Postacoglu is trying to bring to Spurs. You can know what you want about my team. You can know what you want about my club. But you can't stop us, baby. You can't stop us. I hope that's what it is. That's the revelation that came to me today. I hope it comes to pass. If not, if that ain't the case, then Postacoglu is legitly a madman. Because it wouldn't make any other sense. That is the only reason why he must be adamant to, to do this system without reproach, without changing it. Because he believes that once they get it, he's talked about the fact that our forward line are not fluid. They don't know how to do the patterns of play yet. 
I also think Tim Werner is fully dusty. Get him out. I can't. I knew it. I don't like players that are lightweight. I don't like them. Look at Zani Lola. We wanted him at Spurs. This guy here is a bloody barbarian. You need barbarians on the pitch. Newcastle, one of the biggest, strongest henchmen in the league, the 300, taking on the Persian army, that kind of thing. Newcastle, with all their guys with shields and bloody swords, up against Tim Werner. What's Tim Werner? What's Mickey Mouse going to do? Tim Werner. What's Brendan Johnson going to do? Mickey Mouse. These guys are all lightweight. So they were never, physically, we weren't even going to be able to compete with Newcastle. We were too frail. We're too soft. Do you know what I mean? That's the difference between Newcastle and Spurs. The Arsenal players, apart from Partey, are pretty soft. Do you know what I mean? What? Martinelli? Soft. Saka, he don't want it. Jesus don't want it. So their whole Trossard don't want it. Their whole forward line don't want it. Partey wants it. Who's on the right wing? What, Ben White? Get him out of my face. Saliba, he's a nice guy. He's a good defender, but he's a nice guy. Gabriel is a bit of a scumbag. And what, Zinchenko? Zinchenko don't want it. Tommy Asu don't want it. Reza don't want it. And I think are that's we back on Arsenal? Are we, are, we back on, are we back on Arsenal here? Yeah. But, no, look. No, 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 you, you, you know. <laughs> listen, I like it. I think I'm starting to hear you. You didn't quite put the microscope on Ange. You gave him a little. No, maybe, you gave him a little slap I'm on the not, hand. You gave him a little slap on the hand. He's um, allowed a free pass this season, but he's not allowed the same free pass for next season. We're not having that. But he's allowed a free right. pass. Let him learn. The Premier League is know. the biggest and toughest league in world football. Let him learn. He's learning. I like. I like it. I like that you're giving your manager a pass this season. Um, because obviously then that means next season the scrutiny that is going to come to is there and that this sort of bringing on to this dead obviously we're going to keep trying to do this to the end of the season it's quite interesting because you won't have a game for us to talk about at the weekend so it is sort of coming back to Villa the pressure on Villa and Bournemouth right so after this do you think you'll beat Bournemouth? huh? do you think you'll beat Bournemouth? do you think I'll beat of course we'll beat Bournemouth at home I think you're underestimating Bournemouth. Josh, don't... I'm actually trying to help. Please, people. Our, Villa fans, please clip this. I'm telling Josh right now, do not shake your bum for Bournemouth. Bournemouth is a dangerous team that plays good football. They've got a geezer called Christie in that midfield who is sourcing. Are you... Don't underestimate them, my bro. Do not underestimate them, Josh, because they could slap you guys up this weekend. Yeah, listen, I respect them, but I know my team. I know my team. I know the fact that my Aston Villa team are going to go to France. They're going to go put in a performance, hopefully get us through to a semi-final of a European competition. And then, listen, we got to so, raise no, it. No, don't, don't do that. The Europa <laughs> Conference League is so pony that we were delighted to be removed from the competition when we were in it. Do you know Spurs removed themselves from the competition? What? <laughs> I can't, I can't. This we did, though. So, so we got you know, removed. If you lose, we did, if we you lose, know how Tottenham got knocked out one. of the Europa Conference League? We did turn I'm going to use that one. I'm going to use that one. If we lose on Thursday, I'm going to say, Unai purpose. I hope you bat me with this. I'm going to say, Unai purposely got us out of that. So we could go and get top four on purpose. I remember that one. That's a good, that's a good one. That yeah. Is, actually. The only thing I will say is, if you are going to do what Spurs did and remove yourself from the competition, make sure you get top four. Okay. All right. Make sure. Because it would be very stupid to remove yourself and then you don't even get fourth. And I've already said it tonight. Neither of us should fifth be a Champions League space. Neither of us can shake our bum for that. It's a shambles. We'll have to play it. We'll have to play it, but we can't shake our bum. Like, I won't be publicly declaring <laughs> that Spurs are in the Champions League, but I will be doing match reactions to Champions League nights. You're, you're a different kettle of fish, you are. Um, listen, so I just need to hear from you, because obviously probably next time we'll talk on our shows, when we meet again, we'll be just us playing. 
Are we beating? Are we beating Bournemouth, Daji? Yes or no? You guys are at home, aren't you? Yeah, we are. Look, I predicted that Villa was going to take points from Arsenal. Mm -hmm. Bournemouth went away to United. They won there this season. And to be fair, they gave Tottenham a run for their money at Argaff. It's not financial advice by any stretch. But I can see the weekend result being two all between Villa and Bournemouth. I can see. But listen, I, I, two all. And if it happens to be two all, all I ask for is just a little bit of respect. Because I'm trying to help. But there is no way Villa is slapping up Bournemouth. No, no, no. That team, oh. that manager there, he's got them playing some really, really good football. I, I, I think two all. It will be too easy to say that Aston Villa will beat Bournemouth. I don't think you will. I think it's a draw. You don't think we'll have learned from that Brentford at home and uh, where we, you know, threw away to you know, and Drew Friel. You don't think we've learned from that now? Because, you, because yeah. you did something that dusty. You did that. You <laughs> did that. That Brentford result was so dusty. Who, I mean, who does that? Villa does that. And 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 there's more to come. There's more to come. It's going to be the name of a show between Deji and I, Done and Dusted, something like that. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Well, listen, uh, thank you for predicting the two-all draw. I don't think it will be that, but it will be great to be able to reflect on that. And hopefully, you know, when we meet again, we will be in a six points clear of you. And yes, you have two games in hand, but it's the pressure, Deji. It is the pressure. And that bottle will be overboiling, oh. overcooking, and you're going to explode. And that is why... Oh. Games in hand, I always say this. Too many people in this football sphere act like act like games in hands are guaranteed. You're talking like you're definitely going to win your game in hands. But all I can do is go off my team's facts. And if we go and win and get three points, we are factually six points clear of you. And yours is ifs, but well, what happens if you don't what happens if you don't win? If we don't win, okay. Then we'll address that next week. We will address. No, but that if you don't week. win, do you still think you'll finish full? This was my stance, and I'm not changing from my stance. I told you yesterday, I said it a few weeks ago. I said that if Aston Villa were in fourth place come the end of the final whistle against Arsenal and we were sat in fourth looking at your fixtures and our fixtures, I said we would go on to get fourth. I said that two, three weeks ago. And I've reaffirmed it yesterday. For me, it was to get and put, I believed we would have got something against Arsenal potentially. And as long as we were ahead of Spurs, no matter if it was goal difference or what, I looked at your fixtures and I looked at ours and I've gone, here we go. Here we go. So listen, it's, it's bring it on. I bloody love this. I love that me and you are going head to head uh, for, for, for the rest of the season. There's no better person to share my time hearing their views. And I must say, big up to all the chat today. We loved your comments. Um, don't yeah, don't think that we don't see them. Um, and um, look, we've got people from like my channel who are, who are Villa fans said, fair play to Deji, top banter. And as mad as that guy is, he is definitely confident. Got respect that. But I think looking into Villa as opposed to being in the Villa clip means crazy perspective. That's, that's cool. It's good, big up, big up, British mate. So, listen, um, I just said this should be the truth, or I might hurt myself. That's so funny. <laughs> um, but I pinned Deji's channel on a view from the stands, it's in the, it's in the comments. If you could sub to him, because look, we all need to get into his streams near the end of the season when Spurs have bottled it. We need to really let him know, and that he can't hide from us. We will find him if he declines to come on our show, we will find him together. So, please, please. Please uh, do subscribe to him because I want him to get to a thousand subscribers ASAP, Rocky. Um, final one here. Don't forget Peter Beersley, Deji, because that you know Pete, the ghost of <laughs> Peter Beersley haunted uh, you. I'm never going to live with that. Isn't it? I I don't know why I thought Peter Beersley <laughs> played for Villa. I don't know what came over me. I don't know what happened. I could. I and the, the craziest thing is, it's not Peter Beersley, was it? What was the geezer? Who was I thinking of? The Liverpool, the Aston Villa legend. <laughs> Dion Dublin? No, it wasn't Dion Dublin. But anyway. It was the Peter one with Beersley. the, um, no, Peter Beersley is the one with the crooked nose, isn't it? Yeah, Peter Beersley, the ghost of Peter Beersley right. haunted him at the weekend. It was it was absolutely brilliant. Um, and yeah, it's, 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 it's incredible. But no, big up to everyone in the chat. Um, 
and uh, so many great comments today. We will hopefully be back um, next week. Monday yeah, we have to be. Weekend. Although Spurs are not playing this, are you guys playing this weekend? Oh God, Daddy, yeah, your head's gone all wobbly. We're not playing Maybe this weekend. Just... In the FA Cup. No, but we just talked. We just talked about Bournemouth. Yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. So you're playing this weekend. Sorry. So what? Okay, Spurs is not playing this weekend because the Man dust. City. We're supposed um, to play Man City. Yeah, sorry. My it, um, Arturo, I've seen all your comments. Deji has made it clear that Spurs are beating the Three Musketeers. Like he is, he is dead set on that. He probably would tell you not financial advice, but financial advice to um, get on that. But yeah, That's a lot of dust is going up Deji's nose right now because from from his cabinet, but. Um, oh. Listen, uh, appreciate everyone. Um, appreciate everyone from tuning in for both channels. Make sure you smash, smash the like. Make sure you subscribe. Um, and we will be back but, again. But just quickly, peeps, let yeah. us know in the comments because because I don't want you guys to just be hiding away in your underwear, bashing away at the keyboard. You lot need to say it with chest. Josh has come out with chest tonight to say that he thinks Villa's finishing fourth. I've come out with chess tonight to say Spurs is finishing full. Let us know what you think in the comments. Who is finishing full? Because if you're wrong, you all deserve to go down with Joshy right here. Don't go <laughs> hiding. Don't go hiding behind your phone or the keyboards. I We want to know. We want to know. Rhino is saying Villa can finish third. I think if anyone is going to be finishing third, it's Spurs. I've been saying it for a while. Josh has heard me say it. If Liverpool... And the, the maddest thing is, had Tottenham just done what they needed to do, we would have been two points behind Arsenal right about now. But anyway, that's another story. Spurs to finish. Where is Villa and Spurs finishing? Okay, big up, art, by the way. Artillero, I, I'm starting to think, is a school <laughs> student. I'm starting to think he's, what, year eight or year nine? Someone needs to take Artillero's phone from him, to be honest. Uh, I love this one as well. Newcastle, Newcastle will catch Spurs. Love that. Impossible. Yeah. <laughs> Don't call them dusty, because they did you over. Um, so, <laughs> and look at Curves and Newcastle 4. Bloody hell. Um, but listen, I like your predictions. Uh, Dino, who's a Villa fan, said we might finish fifth, but I reckon same points. Wow, goal difference could be the decider, is it? Um, on that. Um, but yeah, listen, it's great that people cover chest. We're going to wrap this up right now. Uh, and of course, everyone uh, in a view from the stands, as I said, I'll be back for the big watch along. Lil, we've got to go to France. We've got to go and put on a performance of the season because those boys, they're a good side. And they've got an incredible home record, which we need to sort of break their little, um, you know, good patch there. Yeah. Deji, when could people check you out? Have you got anything coming up in this week? If they want to have a bit of a laugh, you know, need some cheering up, What? What? what when could people possibly see you again? Well, I, I take issue with having a bit of a laugh, Josh. You know, we're having serious football conversation here. This is Sorry, all about I'm, Champions League. Don't. No, <laughs> jokes aside. You know, I'll be on Never a Foul Wednesday night, slapping up the Arsenal fans in the building, slapping up the Man United fans. None of them can chat to me right about now. Arsenal or Manchester United. And I do not conversate with any Chelsea fans. Yes, Meta Football, in, you know what? It was Dean Saunders. Why did I oh, think... Yeah, you put that. It was Dean Saunders. Meta, thank you. Thank you. That Rhino was the mistake. I, I meant Dean Saunders all this time. <laughs> Dean Saunders is who I was chatting about. Did Dean Saunders play for Newcastle and Villa? That's what people saying, yeah, in the chat. That's where yeah, you get... You don't know to. Dean Saunders, Josh? <laughs> mate, you're giving, just... your age, mate. you're giving away your age, mate. You're giving away your age. Dean Saunders <laughs> is a ledge. Meta football, big up to you for, for helping me out. Yes, it was Dean Saunders, the Welshman, who I was thinking of. Not bloody Peter Beardsley. Crikey. Anyway... Um, I'll be on Never a Foul. I will be doing um, some Tottenham, Arsenal, North London stuff from this week because the game is next week. And to be honest, there's a few Arsenal fans that I need to bloody get through, get through to and slap up. You know, the likes of Goonie Lee. I've got the North sides of this world. There's a lot of cronies that I need to deal with. So I'll be dealing with them all before the game uh, next weekend. 
<laughs> can't wait to watch that. Um, but there we go. There we go. Chat, have a good evening, whatever you do. Big up to all of you. Thank you so much for coming in today from both sets of channels. We appreciate it. And we'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys. We're out of here. Ta-da.